The next speaker is Carsten Lewitschka. He is archivist at the Stacey Records office, Berlin since 2007. He is deputy director of the Department of Archives of the Federal Commissioner for the Records of the State Security Service of the former GDR. Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, um, in 2007, a German movie I received um, international um, attendance. It was The Lives of Others, Das Leben der Anderen, a very famous uh, movie. <coughs> what this movie shows was the daily work of the Secret Service, of the East German Secret Service, the Staatssicherheit, the Stasi. What the movie doesn't, uh, didn't um, address in that detail was the information management of the Stasi, the archive work. So um, today I want to give you a short look behind the scenes of this archive work. Uh, first, um, I want to just a very short overview about the holdings, the archival holdings of the Stasi Records office. And then second, I decided to uh, choose one example, the one of the most important index catalogs of the Staatssicherheit, the uh, central card file on individuals. So what do we house in our archives? We have a lot of paper, uh, around 100 kilometers of paper records, which means files, documents, maps, drawings, technical drawings, um, 12 kilometers, just 12 kilometers of Stasi index catalogs, which means nearly around 41 million index cards and uh, 4,500 index catalogs, 47 kilometers of uh, Stasi microfilms, 15,500 bags of shredded Stasi material uh, torn by hands. We still have them and we started to reconstruct, but um, we're still working on that. And 1.7 million photographs. Um, as you can imagine, uh, secret police uses a lot of all these audiovisual possibilities to uh, screen people. And um, so that means also um, more than 30,000 sound and video recordings and uh, 46 Stasi data projects. So um, if you are a secret police and if you want to be a very powerful and efficient secret police, you need a very effective and fast management of your information. And so I said that we still have these 4,500 index card catalogs with these 51 million index cards. And here you can see a historical photograph of these um, drawers where they stored all these um, index cards. And uh, here you can see an uh, employee of the Stasi, an older employee, and he's working on this central card file catalog by hand. Um, so let's focus on the central card file catalog. What is the structure? Uh, what is the clue about it? So just about the numbers. You see there are two different sort of index cards. This one and that one. On the left hand side this one is the real name catalog. And the Stasi, they sorted it by the format, the printed forms. There's the printed form 16, as you can see here. And there's the printed form 22, this is that one. So, and there are two different index um, catalogs, index card catalogs, but they are linked together. Uh, on the left hand side, these are about 7.7 million index cards, and the right hand side is 2.2 million index cards, so the whole sum nearly 10 million. And uh, so may I ask, what is the link? And uh, I guess you can see it. It's this registration number. This one is sorted by um, alphabetical order, and that one by numerical, by this number <laughs> here. The main interest of our secret police is, of course, to have a fast access to the information, and, of course, to keep the secret secret. And um, it's always a danger that someone maybe sneak in and get information and bring it out. That was uh, 
uh, still maybe the business of agencies, of uh, secret services, and it was in the Cold War, of course. And um, so the Stasi, they were thinking about how to keep this secret, sec secret and uh, it's, it's a quite easy uh, model, uh, also quite simple, but very smart. You have this one here in a separate room, and there are separate employees working on this index catalog. And uh, on the right hand side, uh, this form 22 in another room, or another rooms, with other people working on that. And uh, so if you do research here, um, you get by name of a particular research, and then you get this number, and then you write the number on the uh, piece of uh, sheet, and then it goes to the other division, and they search by number, and then they find about the content. Let us go to the form 16, what is in it? Well, the, the, the common personal data is, um, we heard about, it's like the, the name, surname, maiden name, nationality, um, date of birth, place of birth, also the profession. This is a Arbeitstherapeut, which is a physiotherapist. And um, well, there's also the date when they started this uh, file, yeah, and so on. If you have this uh, form 16, you cannot see whether this one is a friend or it's an enemy, or is it... Is it a victim or is, uh, is it an uh, unofficial informer? You can not see it out of this index card. You can see it by that. This is the card of files, we call it like that, the form 22. And then you can see, okay, this is a fall of EM, which means that the Stasi was seeking or uh, checking whether this guy might be or is a um, possible former unofficial informant where they can use it. And they checked it and uh, they gave him a code name, Max Pfleger. And they checked it one year. And you can see in the fall of 1987, they decided uh, he is not, uh, they won't uh, be able to make an unofficial informant out of him. And then they put it to the archive. And this is the archive number with our sort of signature we can still use this file today with this signature. So again, we have this interesting combination. And so now what I'm interested in, whether there's a possibility, you see this is, there's nearly, there's no handwriting usually, or sometimes an abbreviation. It's just printed text. Uh, we would be interested in... Um, we, so far we don't, don't have, we have films, microfilms of it, but uh, so far we don't have any uh, digital images. Uh, we would have to digitize the whole the, from 16 and 22, and now we index them. So, but it would be much easier if maybe the computer can do it for us. Now we need the name, we need, um, yeah, we need this, this uh, number, of course, uh, the address maybe, um, well, well, as much as possible. So, um, <laughs> thank you very much, and I'm interested what um, your help for us maybe might be. Thank you. Um, my question would be: uh, I mean, <clears throat> I think uh, the most important task is probably to match the two numbers. Yes. Um, I think that's something more or less trivial. Okay. Uh, that, <laughs> <laughs> that, that can be done, yeah, that can be done just, you, you just say you want to have it and then people will do it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, it it's more or less that simple. Of course it needs, it needs something, but if, if it is rather stable, maybe there is even a system within yes. this number, uh, then it becomes even easier to apply some rules to, to check if there is uh, a kind of uh, uh, probable error. Because, as we can see, there are a lot of uh, yeah, maybe misspelling. And so yeah, it's always the same scheme. We have this Roman yeah. number, and then you have this current number, and then you have the year of starting the file. Okay. But there is something, so is this no problem, this fading sort of... Okay. 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 Okay
No, you, are, you will need training data. That's clear, okay. and you will need to to uh, to have a closer look to this. That's clear, but. Uh, to then to match it with a very high probability, with a very high probability, so that you can trust on it, yeah, yeah? Uh, is is uh, of course possible. Yes. yes. Is there any redundancy in the number? Sorry. Is there any redundancy? I mean, the numbers are uh, consecutive or unique or uh, unique? Are, are I mean, uh, well, these these like, numbers like are unique. In, in, ideas that uh, you have uh, one more number so that the checks should be different. So no, these, these numbers are unique. That's just one. Yeah, but, one. but, but you may have uh, x, x, tw uh, 2, uh, 1, 6, 6, 8, 7. Yeah. One year later. Yeah. One year later? Yeah. Or maybe... There are no checks on system. No, no, no checks on system. No, no, no code. No. 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 <laughs> no, not hundred percent. Never, never. You never get hundred <laughs> percent. But you get, you get something very good. Uh, and please always be aware that you need to work with images plus the text and the data in the background. So we have seen several projects before where there was the indexing done uh, just uh, by keying, which is fine if you can be sure that 100% of the information is in the electronic record. But if you have an automated method, you always should have the image very close to the data which are, are produced automatically because then the human being can say, okay, here's the one person or one, uh, 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 here's a problem, there is a mistake. So yeah? that means you would integrate the image in the database? The, that's, that's very important to have this close uh, connection between image and data okay. uh, if you present it to a user because the user finally always is able to decide, yes, uh, it is correct or no, there was a problem. Okay. Okay. Yeah? And, and um, what, what's about these, all these other um, like names and so on? Yeah, uh, my, my question is uh, for of EM. Yeah. Um, that's important, I guess, because yes. uh, of course you would like to know afterwards uh, just by pressing a button how many people were full of EM or how yeah. many people uh, were actually uh, working. <laughs> Um, so that's something I guess uh, you have maybe several uh, stamps uh, during the years, yes. but it's uh, also a, a number which uh, is, is rather limited, yeah. so maybe 20, 50, yeah, maybe. whatever. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And again, uh, with, some, uh, with marking them and, and training them, you can be very sure that you will first of all find it within this region and, and second that you can uh, uh, match it to the list you have already uh, provided. So that, of course the domain knowledge would be important, that's clear, because you know what is in there um, to, to define this. And then, uh, well, some things are also trivial, like the, the writing here, Every OCR engine will provide good results, uh -huh. uh, especially again if you know uh, something about um, the, the semantics of the fields. Mm -hmm. So, like uh, DDR or Berlin, the address, or also the list of, of professions that's something probably some hundreds or maybe two or three thousand of, of options you will expect. And this will, of course, help the engine. Okay. So um, that means I would teach the computer this formats, this form 16 and form 22, or all these places where the name stands and... Uh, exactly. Okay. For, uh, first of all, this uh, form would be needed to be, to be defined, uh, and then probably the training data will be needed, uh, and then um, some things like redundancy, we have here the 1986 and the year 86 over there. If this appears on 50% of the cards, it can be used 
to validate also the number yeah, and to validate back uh, the date. So there is a, a lot of, of, of possibilities. I mean, here we have very fainted, um, uh, very fainted writing. Probably this gets lost. Uh, I mean, that's hard to say, but um, that could be lost. But anyway, I mean, uh, you will get a lot of information out of that, and, and you will have the link. Okay. But, but yes. very yes. Uh, there's no 100%. That's important. Okay. Never expect 100%. Be satisfied if it is... Uh, <laughs> Yes, be satisfied if, if it is 90. Uh, for special things like over there, uh, you can expect more. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, exactly. No? The rate is a function of the sum here is to invest. Of, of what is invested? The rate, now you promise, is a function of what he is going Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah. But please, especially for smaller projects, there's always a trade off between. Um, um, is it better to do it 100% correct manually or to invest a lot of money and resources and thinking into an automated method yeah? so um, if you have 1 million of pages then usually it is better to invest money into automated processes and live with the fact that uh, you have for some fields, maybe 97% of accuracy, and for other fields, maybe just 85 or 80%. Mm -hmm. But you, you, yeah. But if you really want to be sure, uh, for smaller projects, it, it makes no sense to to engage uh, researchers or uh, companies uh, dealing with uh, uh, the software in a very deep sense, yeah, because it's expensive, and at the end you will always have the errors from an automated process. Yeah? So for small projects, it makes no sense. Okay. So we have two other questions. Uh, I think it's okay. I just wanted to emphasize one thing that should be said. Because uh, we all know that even if you do so by hand, you never get 100%. Okay. That's the difference. So if we automatically get something like 90 and then the project is running on, as we all know, uh, it's uh, important to know that you never get 100% as uh, is known in, uh, in archives. This was something I wanted to say. Something else uh, is more a question. We have seen uh, with your material that there is under the first uh, white uh, block on the right hand side, the huge, which is now gone away anyway, <laughs> the huge difference between a very little script <coughs> written by a typewriter and then a very big stamp, uh, very near and very close. It was Registrierungsnummer, I think, REC, NR, and then a very big stamp. Mm -hmm. uh, is that a problem? to our computer scientists, that there are some characters, one very small, and nearby one, uh, one other very big. Is that something like that? Well, I believe the initial success is that we always have some normalization, I guess everybody does, and also on the other side is appear. So we try to sort of normalize or standardize the, the for instance, the height. So the network or the HMM will not see exactly what okay. we see here. It sees some standard C. That's not okay. Yeah, that's okay. usual. Okay, thank you. I'd like to point out that if you apply all of this knowledge to your reading result, you will get a further improvement because an oculist sees uh, at first sight that the number 20, Roman 20 and then Arabic number 2166 from 86 is one of the last numbers of the year 86 because this card was issued on the 23rd of December. So you know that any reading beyond 2500 is wrong. <laughs> and if you sort your reading results from out of the year 86 from 1 to 2200, 
when one is left out, you have made a mistake. <laughs> and if you have the same number twice, you have made a mistake. And then you can correct these reading results, and so you will have a 100% a or very near 100% result. And, and that's what archivists can supply. Yeah, this is an excellent example for a domain. That was exactly the kind of uh, yeah, and that's exactly uh, uh, what we call domain knowledge. Domain knowledge helps a lot, especially with such complicated cases. And uh, if you say that you have four thousand five hundred different catalogs, uh, then uh, uh, a lot of domain knowledge <laughs> is in your head, yeah. which uh, needs to be translated into uh, this. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.